Former President Donald Trump's attorney, Sidney Powell, was recently struck down in court following a surprise request. Hello and welcome back to Resist the Mainstream. I'm Steve Inman, reporting the news that the mainstream won't. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and of course, hit that notification bell for updates on our latest reports. Well, the context of the case revolves around the contentious presidential race of Georgia. Former President Donald Trump had contentious phone interaction with Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, where he expressed his desire for additional votes that would secure his win in the state. This interaction became a significant factor in a criminal investigation led by Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis. On Thursday, a judge struck down the request of former Donald Trump attorney Sidney Powell to dismiss her election interference case, citing prosecutorial misconduct in the 2020 presidential election. So where I wanted to begin, Your Honor, and, and like I said, I've been expressing concerns about Brady from the beginning, and I speak of Brady uh, as if everybody knows what Brady is. I think it's important to remember what it is. Uh, it requires the government, its case, Brady versus Maryland, it requires the government to produce ev evidence favorable to the defendant um, and as we all know, it's critical to ensure due process. That is to say that a defendant get a fair trial. Uh, and it extends to information that supports Ms. Powell's defense. Uh, and I've been telling the government since the very beginning what her defense is, Your Honor. Um, and that defense, of course, is number one, she had nothing to do with Coffee County. I've been saying it over and over again. Uh, but more importantly, I think also that whatever happened in Coffee County, whoever was involved, whoever was responsible, that conduct was authorized. Uh, and so I've been telling the government what it is. Uh, and, and I want to go further than that, though, on Brady, uh, to remind the court, which I know the court already knows, who's covered by Brady? Uh, instinctively, people might believe that Brady only extends to the district attorney's office. Now, that's, of course, not the case. Uh, Brady extends to anyone involved in this case. Knowledge is imputed to the government if any of their investigators, including members of the GBI, had information that was favorable to the defendants. Uh, they can't hide behind an argument that they looked in their folder, they didn't find what I asked for and say that's, we've satisfied our obligations. And the case law is very clear on that. So let's start there. You're saying anyone who's been involved with the case. Yes. That's the standard in Georgia? I think, Your Honor, the standard is the prosecution team is anybody who is an integral part of the team. Someone who the DA had authority over. Well, it's not even just authority, Your Honor. Anybody who participated in the case. And, and the investigation of this case, if they have investigators out there doing work uh, and investigators who are sharing materials with them, those individuals are part of the prosecution team. And I, I'm going to get to this in a moment, but we just got a GBI report that they got. I didn't get. They got. Uh, and so there is a very strong argument that the GBI and the efforts that they conducted in doing their investigation, they're arguably part of the prosecution team, too. Following the 2020 election, the Trump campaign sought a hand recount in Georgia given the close margin between the candidates. Despite several recounts and certifications confirming Biden's victory, Trump and his allies persisted in their challenges. In a notable interaction in January 2021, Trump conveyed his wish to Raffensperger for a specific number of votes that would tip the balance in his favor. In his response, Raffensperger refuted Trump's assertions, indicating discrepancies in Trump's data. By February 2021, District Attorney Willis initiated a formal investigation into the actions of Trump and his allies concerning the election results. This investigation was comprehensive, involving the formation of a special grand jury, interviews with numerous witnesses, and a series of legal motions from both parties. By August 14, 2023, a significant development occurred. Trump, along with 18 others, faced charges in comprehensive racketeering indictment. This indictment alleged a coordinated effort to influence state officials, provide misleading information to election workers, and promote baseless claims about the election. The ultimate goal was to ensure Trump's continued presidency despite his electoral loss. I think we're narrowing in more on what we can actually do in this pretrial phase and um, what actually could be considered Brady. So to that end, uh, if there is something in a note that's exculpatory, that's an interview of a witness that wasn't memorialized elsewhere, I think that would be an exception generally to attorney work product as it, as it applies under the case law. So we can, uh, we can file an order directing many of these things and this, you know, this, uh, the states uh, would have the obligation to double check and triple check and if during the second and or however many trials we have, something else comes up, uh, then the state's really setting itself up. Uh, if, uh, I don't have to, we don't have to go down there. But um, I, I think we're clear there. Mr. Rafferty, any final thoughts or anything else that you would want to see in that order? 
Sure. The only issue with interlocutory is I don't think there's any guarantee that it, I think the process for that is it's about 40, 45 days for the Court of Appeals to tell us that they want to take the case. And uh, don't have any intention of, now that we've subpoenaed all these jurors, uh, to, to kick it down the road. So uh, defendants have requested a speedy trial and we're going to provide one. Key figures in Trump circles such as Mark Meadows and Rudy Giuliani were among those indicted. The Trump campaign criticized the indictment and Trump himself denied any wrongdoing, suggesting political motives behind the investigation. The legal proceedings continue with both sides employing various legal tactics and strategies. The outcome will not only determine the legal futures of Sidney Powell and others implicated, but may also influence future election related legal challenges. Let us know your thoughts below in the comments. Very curious to see what you have to say. Until next time, I'm Steve Inman with Resist the Mainstream, reporting the news that the mainstream won't. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and of course, hit that notification bell to stay up to date with our latest stories. Until next time, take care, and we'll see you then.